just give us uh, some uh, reasoning behind the listing uh, and the issuing of these 4 million shares and uh, what percentage uh, of the company does this represent? Absolutely. Tello is um, a leading independent oil and gas exploration and production company and with a, it has a very strong interest in Africa. Now, Tello commenced its production from its Jubilee field in Ghana at the end of last year. As a result of that, clearly, Tello has a long-term interest in, in Ghana and, and in Africa in general, and I think this listing is a demonstration of that. In, in addition, I think the company is very keen to ensure that people who have an active interest in Ghana uh, have an opportunity, really, to own a share in the company and benefit from its future. Now, Tala has over nine, uh, almost 900 million shares, all of which will be listed in Ghana, and, and is issuing an additional 4 million, as I say, to ensure that people who have an active interest in Ghana have an opportunity to own some of those shares and benefit in the company's growth. Give us an idea of the potential that you see in uh, Ghana's oil fields now. Um, according to uh, sources, uh, Tallo has predicted that uh, oil exports could, could reach uh, 2 mi million barrels uh, per day. Is that what you're forecasting? I think the, I think the opportunity is vast. Tallo continues to discover more oil, not just in Ghana, but across the, 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 the 22, 23 countries that it operates in. Um, we, we, uh, internally, our view is that the 58,000 barrels a day that Tello produced last year is only a fraction of the potential that the company has. So we expect there to, to be continued expansion of production, and you will see the 1.1 billion or so revenue continue to go quite aggressively over the medium term. Now, Tallo has said that it's uh, pulling out of, the Ga out of uh, Congo and it is reducing its stake in Uganda. Uh, can you give us some uh, reasoning behind um, these moves and are you using the money from the, the sale there to increase your presence in Ghana? I think from our perspective our, our focus really is on making sure that the listing goes ahead and goes ahead successfully and, and we would encourage people to take a, a very close look at the, the, the information that Tano puts out. I think Tano has recently announced that its, its discussions in Uganda have gone successfully but I think the key, the key thing here is that investors will get a chance to, to, to own a share in a company that has over 90 licenses across sort of 22, 23 countries and continues to find oil on a, on a, frankly, on a daily basis. And, and that's really what I think the company wants people to understand. Now, what about competition for uh, oil in uh, the Jubilee area? Because we had the, um, the issues with uh, Cosmos and the government, uh, the government wanting to buy the stake uh, in Cosmos, and that's fallen through. Cosmos is planning an IPO of itself to raise $621 million. So what type of competition are you seeing from uh, other oil exploration uh, companies in the region? I think there are always companies out there looking to, to, to explore and produce oil all over the world. I think Tallo, what Tallo has demonstrated is that a quarter of a century's worth of, 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 frankly, an unparalleled ability to go into those places in the world where people have overlooked and actually find and, 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 produce, and, and produce oil. And they've done that very well over the last 25 years. So there will be some competition, but I think Tallo is very well placed. If you look at a place like Ghana, a place like Uganda, um, places in, in Central and Latin America, you will find that Tallo has some of the best licenses out there. So I think it's, from a competitive perspective, it's very well placed to continue to be a leading company in that sector. What about the risks uh, that you face in the country? Because um, previously it was a country dependent on aid from the developed world, and now all of a sudden, given the uh, oil discoveries in the region, it's set to be the fastest growing economy in sub Saharan Africa, IMF predicting growth of around 13%. It's shooting to this uh, new position uh, of the, one of the top uh, 50 oil producing nations in the world. Is the government ready to handle the type of revenues and the type of interest that it's going? to uh, be garnering from the uh, developed world and from oil companies in particular? I, I think so. I think you'll find when you look at Ghana that the, the company, the economy, even before oil, has been growing between 5 and 7 percent per annum over the last six, seven, eight years. I think you will also find that the government has done a lot of work in terms of understanding the potential impact of oil and how to use the revenue of oil for setting up stabilization funds and heritage funds and so on. So I have, I have a lot of confidence that the, the leaders of our country are, are well placed and, and understand uh, some of the risks involved and some of the opportunities and are very much 
place to, to, to take advantage of those opportunities going forward. So I'm very, I'm very, I'm very optimistic, and I think investors in Ghana should be optimistic as well. Just give us an idea of uh, how, how much you expect uh, shares to start trading at um, and on June the 13th, and uh, what is the uh, likely appetite uh, that you're expecting for your stock? And the, 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 the offer price will be announced on the 13th of, of June, so I, I can't really comment on that. But I think in terms of appetite, the book building that we've done suggests that there is very strong appetite, not only for the, com the company, but also for the country. So we're very confident that the, the, the listing will be oversubscribed because people do want access to, to talent, people who, who, are, who are actively interested in Ghana, and people want interest in Ghana as well. So we're very confident on that point. Let's just go back to issues that you are having in uh, the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo. I mentioned that earlier that uh, Talo said it's pulling out of the country. Can you give us an update of what's happening on that uh, front? I think from our perspective, we, we have to focus on the listing in Ghana. I think Talo, as and when it has new information on, on that front, we'll, we'll pull data. But we are, our, our interest at this point is making sure that people understand the story in Ghana and, and, and understand when the listing is going to happen and subscribe successfully. Apart from um, the opportunities that Ghana uh, offers in the Jubilee field, where else are you uh, embarking on exploration activities, not only in the African region but in the rest of the world? Where do you see uh, the next uh, major oil field finds? I think if you look at the, the announcements that the company has put out over the last several years, you'll find that it, it, Africa is really its strongest position. But also it has positions across the world in places like Asia, but also in, in, in Central and in South America. And I think you will continue to see the company focus on those areas and generate strong growth from those areas.